my friends, is the singular sound Eros Loop Studio. This thing is a beast of a looper. With no less than six tracks, a beautiful touch-enabled screen, hands-free mixing, and simultaneous parallel and sequential looping capabilities, this thing is deep, guys. We're gonna get to the bottom of it and find out what it's all about. So what kind of features does this thing have, you might ask? A lot. First of all, thing is a very small footprint. You'll notice only four foot switches and then you've got this rotary uh, foot controller for track mixing. Thing's about two pounds or so. You've got stereo inputs and outputs, MIDI in, MIDI out. You've got some aux inputs and outs as well. So stereo out, stereo in with a single TRS cable. Uh, there's a really cool feature here. You've got USB and SD card for you know, if you want to have a bunch of stuff on hand, a bunch of looping materials, pre-recorded parts, you can have that. Or if you're just using it as a scratch pad for songwriting, this is a great feature of being able to take it back to the computer and not have to lose it when you turn the power off. Uh, additionally, this thing can record for about three hours in mono and about half that 1.5 hours in stereo. Okay, so let's quickly go over the settings from the home screen. First thing there, you've got the recording source I've got it set to main in and aux in. There's an additional input on the left side there for, uh, you know, piping in rhythm tracks or other instruments if you're a multi-instrumentalist. Um, so you've got stereo in the top and then through a single jack, single uh, TRS connection will give you a stereo aux in. I've got my main input level to instrument. You might want to set that up differently if you're using an effects loop or a mixer type of a setup. Audio output I have set to mono. I'm currently just taking advantage of mono, although they do have full stereo available. Uh, the loop playback is going through the main outputs. You could also do an additional aux out, you know, if you're piping into a mixer or sharing that um, maybe with another bandmate. I have my main input routing to completely off because I don't want to get any doubling of my sound using the axe effects. I'm monitoring it uh, directly without having a duplicate signal here. Same thing with the aux in. I only want to hear it from my DAW. I don't want to hear it coming out of the looper again. Click routing. Now this is a cool one. You may want to hear a click when you're recording some of these loops that are not in free form. So you can have the aux out be the separate out for your click. So that way the audience is not going to hear that annoying click track as you're recording your loops. And this is a really cool one right below that. You can control if the click goes away after the first loop is complete. So you could have that click in there as a guideline and then bam, as soon as you close that first loop, it turns it off so that way it's not annoying you. Got a click volume, of course. One thing that would be cool is if they had different tonalities. I know drummers are super picky about uh, how their click sounds, the tonality, some like cowbell, some like a little bit, uh, more of a sharper attack. MIDI in. We'll get to some of that stuff later on. Change song part. We want to do end of loop. That's how I like it. You can also do immediate end of measure. Um, so that's handy, again, in free form or, you know, certain people like to do, you know, they want to just change right away. That'd be for you if you want to do that. Mute and unmute track. Same thing. It's going to either go at the end of the measure, end of the loop, or immediate. Uh, depends on your style. I have end of measure. I'm not really using the mutes too much. Play stop all. This is going to be press instead of release. So the difference there is if you stomp on it, having it that initial press control that function, or when you actually press it and release your foot off of it. Personal preference, but I like the press. Track button actions. This is a really cool feature I haven't seen in any other loopers yet. Which basically means that you can control what happens after you hit your loop button. So RPO stands for record play overdub and ROP is record overdub play. So this can be really handy, especially if you're using ambient guitar tones um, 
with that, you don't want to destroy the natural decay of the reverbs or delays you might be using. So by setting this to a record overdub play, it's going to give you a smoother transition with those uh, more ambient tones. And then MIDI channel is just going to tell the arrows what to listen to um, as signal is coming over MIDI into the arrows. And same thing for going out. Um, you know, you don't want to get your devices mixed up on the same channel. So I have it set to three, Axpex is on one. And that about wraps up the home settings. With a looper pedal this deep, this many features, it can be a little overwhelming and maybe hard to know where to start. But uh, Singular Sound seems to have uh, anticipated this little issue and built in a quick start guide right into the front menu here. But before we do that, I just want to mention, if you just got this pedal, you should definitely check out this Wi-Fi feature. Crank that on, get set up with the Wi-Fi, and make sure that you can get that going and make sure you're on the latest firmware because some of the features we may be talking about in this video may not be available to you if you hadn't updated that firmware. Once we've done that, we can enter the quick start guide. Check this out, we can scroll on down and find out just what some of this lingo means. So we're starting out in two by two mode today, which is gonna give you two song parts each with two parallel tracks. So before we go any further, I just wanna uh, kinda lay out some of the terminology. Uh, tracks are kind of like overdubs, except overdubs, it's all going on the same track and you can't control individual overdub volume parts. With the tracks here, you have the option of controlling the volume of each part with your foot, which is awesome. And then song parts, when you're ready to switch to a chorus or a bridge, for example, can stomp on over and you get to choose whether the previous loop carries over or if it's just gonna start a new section entirely. In six by six mode, it's very similar except you're gonna have six song parts each with six parallel tracks for a total of 36 unique tracks. First thing we're gonna get into is looping in what we call free form. So free form is there's no metronome, it's not gonna quantize or snap to a grid. So here's a little example of Freeform looping in the 2x2 two two configuration. All right, now that we've seen how this looper can function in free form mode, let's take things up a notch. Let's see what it can do in six by six. And I'm also gonna turn on quantize to measure. So in six by six, that's gonna allow me to create a little bit more of a song-like arrangement. So I can have a A section and a B section. I'm gonna have multiple instruments. I'm gonna turn my guitar into like a bass and a synthesizer, and of course have some uh, traditional sounding guitar stuff as well. Uh, so the way this is going to function is a little different than a typical looper. So when I hit the switch, it's going to lock me into a um, pre-established tempo. So I've set this ahead of time, and when I hit the switch, it's going to lock it to the closest available measure. So I can hit that switch before the downbeat, which is normally when you need to hit the loop to close. So this is particularly good for somebody that might be new to looping, or maybe if you just don't have the best sense of time, but you want to build a loop, this is going to take out some of that anxiety of having to hit the, the button at exactly the right time. Um, so for me, it also gives me a little chance to, with my other foot, change my presets on my Axe Effects here so I can get some different tonalities going on. So anyway, this is what it sounds like. Oh, and one more thing I should mention is I'm going to be hearing a click, but I've routed that click out of the aux out on the side of the pedal there so that I can hear it and it's not going to drive the audience, uh, you guys, crazy uh, hearing that repetitious thing over and over. So I'm going to leave it in so you can hear what it sounds like on the count in, but then I'm going to take it out. So when I start playing, you'll just hear the music.
things I got to touch on. I think it's a really awesome thing that they have per song save options. So when we call up a song, I'll just go with this one here. If we hit that pencil icon in the upper right, it's going to bring up your song options. Uh, as you save, this is going to bring up a full QWERTY keyboard. So we can name the song, of course, and we can also decide whether that's going to save directly to the arrows or if you want to put it on an SD card, which would be particularly useful if you found some inspiration while you were looping, but you want to expand on that idea as a song, you could dump it into your favorite DAW software and see where things go. You also get to choose between recording in stereo or mono and the configuration of tracks we want to do, how the tracks sync, and how they're quantized, if at all. So having had a good amount of time to sink my teeth into this pedal, I want to share with you some tips that I think will help you get the most out of it. Number one is going to start with your routing, and I'm going to suggest that you put this at the end of your chain, or in other words, closest to your guitar amplifier setup or amp simulator, and not at the end closest to your guitar. You can also put it in the effects loop. And the reason for this is that if you're playing with multiple tones, you know, clean distortion, emulating a bass, uh, you know, you get the point. You want your loops to be pure, and you're not going to want your first loop to change along with your sound. So if you have a clean sound, you're playing, all of a sudden you want to switch into a lead part to play over it. If it's at the beginning of the chain, it's going to be corrupted by gobs of distortion. So keep it at the end, you'll avoid that problem, or in the effects loop. Another way to go would be to have this in a mixer setting, so that way maybe you have other instruments, maybe you have bandmates that want to get in on the looping fun. That would be a great way to set it up. Two, I want to mention, in my opinion, I think this pedal is at its best when you combine it with a MIDI foot controller, and the reason for that is you'll have a unique foot switch for each of the loops. So Singular Sound makes a MIDI Maestro pedal, which gives you, uh, I believe, a six additional foot switches, which would be awesome to have individual switches for each of your loops. It can also control other functions. I personally have been using the RJM uh, Mastermind GT10, and it was able to get the uh, MIDI commands from the manual of the Eros and plug them in no problem to my pedal, creating four additional switches which worked great for me. I should also mention that this pedal integrates with Singular Sound's Beat Buddy pedal and can join up through a MIDI cable, uh, allowing you to start loops and change song sections from the Beat Buddy or from the Eros looper. Uh, there's more to get into with that stuff, but I have to save that for a different video. So the pedal does have a built-in Wi-Fi for firmware updates, but it can be a little finicky. And a great suggestion to help with this is a suggestion I saw on the Singular Sound forums. And that suggestion was to use your phone as a personal hotspot, so that way you can boost the signal going into the Eros. Uh, other than that, just get as close as you can to your Wi-Fi router. Some of you may be wondering, how long can your loops be? The answer to that is 2 minutes and 30 seconds on an individual loop. So while you can store a lot more audio on this pedal and on the SD card, you're going to max out your loop time at 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Is that enough? I think it's plenty of time, but there are some of you out there that may want to use this pedal uh, in hopes of providing some backing tracks or doing a full song playthrough. I don't think this is the best pedal for that usage, but this company is updating things all the time. And speaking of firmware updates, I gotta say, it's really awesome to see a company that cares so much about their product. They're constantly refining this thing and kicking out new firmware updates. And I'm not talking about little details. They're putting in some major upgrades in there. They are clearly listening to what the people want all you brilliant loopers out there you know you've got your preferences and you've got some ideas that would make this thing all the better so be sure and drop in that forum let them know what's on your mind and who knows what we might see in a future update well shucks this has turned into kind of a long-winded video but there's just no way around it because this pedal is so deep uh, in any case i love the concept of looping i think it's a great way for an artist to express themselves and uh, it certainly prevents the headaches of dealing with flaky bandmates so there's that. Uh, Singular Sound has done a great job with this pedal. I'm inspired by it. I hope you find some ideas with this. I hope uh, this video has been informative and inspiring. I'm certainly going to be doing some more looping with this thing and maybe even some other methods as well. I'll be posting some videos about that soon. And uh, if I've missed anything or if you have any suggestions for me, you can always leave them in the comments below. Thanks for being here. I'll see you again soon.